Welcome to Black Health Matters. Y'all know how we do this. My name is Harlan Hodge, and I try to introduce you to people who can uh, tell you a little bit about their journey um, and invite you to come on with them on their journey for health and well-being. Um, today, I've got my brother, uh, my run buddy, my longtime uh, struggle partner on these streets, these streets. Uh, Mr. Keith Davis, also known as KD, the magnificent one. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, we got we got about 30 minutes to chop it up, bro. Let's talk, man. I ain't got no script. Okay. I, I just want to talk to you. I want people to know who you are. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll share a little bit of our history, but I want them to meet you, man, because there's so many reasons why I love you, man. Appreciate you, brother. Man, f first of all, you are one of the best husbands and daddies that I've ever had an opportunity to witness in my life, man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've I've known you and your wife through two marriages now, man. Yes. yes. So, um, my 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 first wife uh, was a, um, a client of your your wife's. She, I literally saw your wife heal um, my first wife, who was struggling with multiple sclerosis. Yes. She looked forward to the days where she could sit in your wife's chair. Yes. And be a woman. Right. Right. And she would do all of these wonderful things while she sat in her chair way beyond uh, doing her hair. Right. And um, and I, I can't tell Janet enough about how amazing that was. And if she did that for my wife, I'm sure she did that for hundreds of other women. She has. But you didn't also know this. I was also watching you that. Uh, I remember every time you come at the end of the day, while I'm picking up my wife from the shop, you coming to the to the shop to clean up, help your wife clean up, close up shop, and to take care of her and take her home. Right. Um, when 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 Kobe, when she was pregnant with Kobe, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm right. like, you selling real estate, you working, you spending all day on the job, and then you come and take your wife on walks in the evening. Right. 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 Kobe's born, and man, I'm I'm seeing you. You got a daughter and a son and a family and that's your number one priority right every game every every single thing that these kids are doing you were like i define myself as daddy yes daddy yes. first yes and so man i want folks to understand what i understand about you right uh there's so many elements i don't know how much we can get through but man i'm glad that you're here with us today i appreciate you man i'm glad to be here yeah 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 man. yeah so how do you how do you how do you define yourself how how do you define yourself? well you know what i thanks first of all thanks for the introduction and thanks for the compliments brother um i, I kind of really want to talk about where that came from you know when it talks about you know taking care of the family taking care of the kids uh my mom and dad remarkable people my dad was an educator for like 40 years my mom worked in um, insurance and they were always pro kids right so they taught me that your kids come first, your family come first. Um, you're the back burner, right? So I think what a lot of where the way we shaped and what we learned, we learned from our parents. That's one lesson that I learned from them. I think I can count on one hand the number of times my dad or mom missed something that my sister and I participated in, right? So for me, that's something that was really cultivated within me. Always want to be there. Even if I had to put something that I want to do on the back burner, because I... Memories are created, like people remember you being there, being in the presence, showing up. Um, people remember that. And I think my kids always remember me being there, Janet being there. You know, I never want to be what I call the camcorder dad. D don't show me the game that it already occurred and let me sit down and look at it on VCR. Mm. I want to be there firsthand, right? So there are a lot of things that I might have postponed in life in order to be in that moment. So I think, first of all, just understanding the importance of being there for family, um, being present there, and not just being there, but being present, which I learned from my mom and dad. Uh, a little about me, um, I consider myself a people person. Love, 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 love people. I'm a, I'm a lover of people, all colors, all races, obviously African-American, but I, I, I'm a lover of people, most definitely, man. I believe that relationship and the ability to connect with people is so, so important. Yeah. I think when we look around this world today, um, a lot of the issues that people are uh, encountering in terms of, you know, the mental health and all that stuff, and I'm not making light of that by no means, but I think some of that 
comes from this pace of being lonely not having someone to to be there to to talk to confide with and just i mean basically just shoot the crap with you know i think that's very very important um so number one i'm a lover of people number two i would consider myself an influencer i think i've always uh tried to be the person that do things that people look at and 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 kind of like okay you know that's something that of interest you know the running or whatever it, it may be um i think i'm an, an, an influencer above all um, and i really hold that title you know very proudly oh man that's it that it, it, absolutely yeah. um we go we go back um uh, way before our running years absolutely but once we started um getting together and running you had a um, um a couple of things that i want to talk through one okay. you know how we would we would talk about how small our worlds were because we were so invested in family yes and that sometimes when you do that, you end up isolated from the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. You don't have as strong of a, a social network because, like, you ain't nobody on what you on right exactly. now. Like, I don't, we ain't going out to the club. We ain't doing all of this stuff. Right. And when we squeeze out time uh, for our own self care, right, 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 it ends up being you and maybe one or two other people, right. And so. We talked about how just me, you, Jamon, out here on these streets, we all we got. We all we have. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think with that, I, I totally agree with that. Um, you have to realize everybody's not buying what you're selling initially, mm. you know, but you can't let that discourage you from what you want to do. So I remember something so vividly, um, take you back, that we ran at Creve Corps with Chuck and Dave. Yeah. And so I started this thing where I want to start getting people to come out to Hazelwood Central and exercise, right? Mm-hmm. And you know how it is. You're doing something that you think is great, but right now it's not kind of catching on. Yeah. So you you find yourself kind of like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I remember this one particular Saturday we ran, and after while I ran, I was going to Hazelwood Central. And I was doubting going because no one was coming. And you told me, you have to show up if no one else shows up. And I think that's what we have to do um, as people, as influencers, as people that is trying to create something. You're not always going to get the the immediate applause. You're not always going to get the immediate response, right? But I think if you do it long enough and consistent enough. See, people follow consistency. People don't follow fickle. People don't follow fair weather. They follow consistency. And consistency sometimes may not occur to a year, two Three. So whatever you do that you believe in, yeah. you have to be in it for the long haul. But see, that's what you said. Yeah. You the the reason I told you that you like there are two things that I'm I really want to do, right? right. There's the, just my passion, right? Your individual passion, right? Fashion, yep, and fitness. Gotta be fly. <laughs> Gotta be fly. <laughs> Gotta be fly. Fashion, fashion, major. Yes. fashion and fitness. Yes. And you said, you know, I want I want to do this for the rest of my life. Yes. Yes. And you, I mean, we would get finished running. Then you like, I want to do a boot camp. Yes. And I'm like, listen, don't count on me to be at the boot camp every day. I might be with you there for one or two days, but don't, you know, if I'm not there, keep on doing it. Yep, 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 yep. But what you would do is that we would come out and whether it was two or three people, you would take a picture of the whole group. Yep. Who was ever there and yep. say, we're going to celebrate y'all showing up today. Yeah. And you plastered across a uh, social network. Absolutely. It was all over the social media. Right. Right. And to this day, hell, what was that? Eight years ago, man. man? Eight years. Yeah. Yeah. Might yeah. Probably more, more than that. More yeah. than that right. Yeah. I think I first raced from like is 2014. Yes. I was looking at that. Yes. But that has become a consistent habit of ours. Yes. Every time we run, we take a picture and people don't understand right. why we're doing that. Right. Help us understand why it's important to do that. Well, it's, it's a visual. Um, again, I think once people can lay their eyes on what you're doing, not what you say you're doing, they can see that, okay, they are really practicing what they preach, right? And I think we have to let people understand that every day is not going to be a 15-person show up, yep. right? So it might just be two people running in four-degree weather. Two people shall remain nameless. <laughs> it might be two people. Uh, it might be three people running. Right. right? So we want to let people know that the show goes on regardless of 
who don't show up, who show up and who do not show up, right? Yeah. So for us, it's very important for everyone to know that the consistency that what we're trying to do mm -hmm. is, is, is a for real thing. You got this shirt on. Yes, sir. Well, what did the shirt say what? We run on Wednesdays. What? We run on Wednesday? We run on Wednesday. So I have one, we run on Monday, we run on Wednesday, <laughs> we run on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been doing it for a while, man. And it's just, um, we make a commitment. This thing, the fitness journey is hard by itself, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, we've talked about this in many occasions that it's just not about us running. That ain't. It, it's me. not. Let me just be very transparent. If it was not for the community, I would. I wouldn't be doing. It. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I love running, and I'm not going to shy away from that. But I don't love running that much. I don't run. I, I don't want to run on a 25 degree day. Listen, I don't. <laughs> I don't even like running. I, well, I don't. I don't like running. I don't love running. Nope. As a matter of fact, I would go as far as to say, you know. Running hurts. Oh yeah, absolutely. What what absolutely. I do like is I like finishing yes. a run. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. I love when we're done with the run to right. be able to say, look what I've done. Right. The other thing, but probably the first thing is I love running with my crew. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There are people that we show up for. There are people that is counting on us to show up because they need that smile or they want to tell you something yeah or they want to share something with you yeah. hey man i hope so and so is there today because i really need to run this by them you know yeah so it's it's almost like um well it's not almost we're an accountability group we are accountable to each other right mm -hmm. some days it's, it's strictly we get out there and everybody is really hustling and running mm -hmm. some days what we call it free fall wednesday sure. i mean um friday and we'll just talk about all different subjects during that time. We might talk about health. We might talk about the latest movie. We might talk about, hey, y'all got any restaurant suggestions? Or yeah. So it, it, it builds this camaraderie mm -hmm. that not only focuses on health, but focuses on ideals and community. But you, so your, 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 your beautiful uh, children, uh, yeah. uh, Joy and Kobe, have now left the house. Yes. Uh, went off to school. Yes. Tell us about the update on them and tell me how now what your focus is and, and how you're taking this, this new time and freedom that you got. <laughs> so remember in, in the beginning, I said that um, sometime when you're trying to be there for family, that you will postpone some things that you want to do. Yeah. So it was very important that I was there supporting them, right? Now we're at the point where Jordan is our oldest daughter. She's 24, getting ready to turn 25. Um, college graduate, graduated from HBCU, yeah, Fort Valley State University yeah. down in Fort Valley, Georgia. Very proud of that. Yeah. Um, my baby girl is a marketing specialist for a um, management pro a property management company, yeah. right? Living in Atlanta, Georgia, just doing it. As a matter of fact, she called me yesterday and she's like, well, Dad, I just want to let you know I've been going to the gym on a regular now. You know what I mean? So yeah. she's really, yeah, she has Had a little, a good volleyball career down great there Great volleyball career, man. She played volleyball from sixth grade all the way until a senior in college. Yeah. And played on, on several stages and was very good at nice. playing. Um, very, very proud of her. Uh, my son, Kobe, is a um, senior at Howard University. Um, mm -hmm. And he is a um, physics, mathematics major. Have done a few interns. He was in New York over the summer. Intern with, um, oh my God, I forgot the name of the research. Uh, this research company. We all trying to be yeah, like. Yeah, man. But you know what? He, matter of fact, he is. And see, so both of them, they get a little bit of everything. Kobe, I'm not as smart as my son. He's uh -huh. extremely Ain't smart. Ain't nobody smart as Kobe. Oh my God. But you know what? What you do, they pick up, right? So Kobe now works at a uh, gym. He actually, matter of fact, he works at Floyd Mayweather's gym in D.C. Wow. And um, he, he enjoys the fitness journey. And Jordan, you know, volleyball player and she did some coaching for volleyball as she graduated mm -hmm. and she enjoys the fitness journey. So I think we, we understand, man, that our children pick up our yeah. good and sometimes bad. Yeah. I'm, I'm prayerful and I'm thankful that my kids did pick up some good stuff. Listen, man, let me tell you what's, what's beautiful. And uh, I wish my son would go for this or my wife would go for it. Y'all, y'all telephone, y'all cell phone tracking system. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> so, so I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with Life 360, right? Um, it's just a way of us just kind of just knowing where the kids are. Is it a is it an everyday thing? Absolutely not. No, everybody's but, but not it, familiar with this Life 360. So, Life 360 thing. is a is a tracking device that every each member of the um, family um, sign up for, and it will tell you 
where your kids are by address and state and blah, 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 right? So we put this on the phone when the kids went to college. As a mean, because think about it. Our, our daughter was in Georgia. That's a 10-hour yep. drive. Sure. Our son is in D.C. That's a, what, eight? That's yeah, an 18-hour drive, yeah. right? 18 hours. I've only driven it once. So you can tell I've never driven again. Uh, <laughs> I've only driven it once. So we don't have the luxury of getting there quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I have to. And, and here's the thing. That's not the cure for if something's going on. Sure. But I need to know when the last places you were. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very important. Now, I don't I don't look at it on a regular. But a quick story. My daughter was went to Nashville to go visit her girlfriend. And as a parent. Just knowing time and, and distance, you're thinking, okay, take you about four hours, get home. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, by this time, I'm looking at Life 360, and you're still at an area that I know you should have passed at least a couple hours ago. Mm -hmm. Well, she had a flat, you know. So just that ab ability for me to look at that and be like, you're not where you're supposed to be yeah, at the yeah. time that I thought you would be there. Yeah. You know, so it's just kind of a, a assurance. I ain't doing a commercial for Life 360. <laughs> I'm doing a commercial on being a good daddy, a Thank good you. mama. Yes. And good kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yes. That our kids don't need, they, yes. they need to understand that I'm not trying to control you. Absolutely. I'm trying to protect you. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And the, at the same time, parents, you're not being, you know, overbearing no. or overreaching. No. This is what love looks this like. This is what love looks like. Yeah. I, I need to know. Um, and here's again, again, they're kids. So we're not monitoring their every move, as you stated. Mm -hmm. But I love you. So I want to know, I want to see if I can find out, you know, if I need to get in contact with you. Like, hey, you know, yeah. the worst thing is, is to look at something or hear that your child is missing or something. This for us, and again, not the Life 360 commercial, but it's a mechanism that we use because I love you and I just kind of want to know well, your whereabouts. Yeah. Yeah, just just plain and simple. That's what that's yeah. that's 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 what love is. That's what it is. That's what love is, man. Yeah. And I and I think that one of the things that we admire about those kids mm -hmm. is that they are they're healthy, yes, well balanced kids. Yes. Well much of what is plaguing our black community uh -huh. uh, can be solved by healthy homes. Yes. We're trying to fix everything else. Yes. Right? And there's a role that education plays. There's a role that social services plays. There's a role that the criminal justice system plays. Right. Right? And we can fix what's broken in those spaces. But if we don't fix what's happening inside of our homes, right. a lot of that work will be for naught. Yeah. You know, um, you're absolutely right. Money cannot cure love. Um, when a child, husband, wife, family members feel the love of the other, it creates this safe space, right? It creates this safe space. It creates a, um, an atmosphere of trust. Mm -hmm. And I, and I do believe, I do believe that people, um, when they feel love, they're more open. You know, our kids are very open with us, sometimes too open, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but they're very open. And I want to create that type of dynamic that you don't have to hide anything from me. I always tell my kids this, you're going to make mistakes. Now, be a problem solver and figure out how to correct that mistake, right? I am never I never want you to be perfect because you're not going to be. I'm not perfect. Your mama's not perfect. We're not going to be perfect. But when you make a mistake, you have to be a problem solver. And I think they have done a pretty good job in doing so. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. I remember when, uh, uh, when, when Kobe, uh, uh, Jordan had already gone off to school mm -hmm. and Kobe was, uh, was leaving the school. Mm -hmm. You said... Um, now my kids ain't perfect, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, uh, and they they've done a lot of good stuff, and they've right. done some stuff that wasn't right. He says, but one thing that Janet and I really appreciate they've never broken our hearts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a major thing, man. Um, you know, I've never had to go pick my kids up from jail. I've never had an incident where you know it was just so tragic of an incident. You know, we didn't have bad grades. Yeah. You know, I can get over bad grades. You know. And, but my kids have never done anything that my wife and I just was like, oh my God, to make us question, did we not do right by them? Yeah. You know, they have never done that. So um, I'm, I'm so thankful to them and there's nothing but God, man, that we kind of try to instill in them that they have not broken our hearts, yeah. you know, and, and I really appreciate that. You know, I, I tell my kids, I, I periodically send them text messages, maybe like once every two weeks, every week. And I just randomly send, hey, you know what? We proud of y'all. Love you. 
That's it. It's nothing. It's not a long, you know, drawn out. It's not a essay. It's just, <laughs> it's just simply, hey, keep doing what you're doing. Love you, you know. And and, and I think they really appreciate. It. They love you back, you know. Man. Yeah. This is uh, man, uh, man. I could spend all day on this. Cause one of the things we get, black men get a bad rep, man. We we don't hear enough about like how men, black men, are being daddies husbands yeah. and this i can guarantee you you ain't seen this <laughs> like this is, <laughs> this is not something we get all the time well you know what believe it or not i think it exists more than what we think yeah you know i i think it's just not shown it's right? just not it's shown. just not shown man i know yeah. man man i can list off so many brothers who are amazing husbands and fathers yes that it, it it's a man you and my older brother Drummond, man, mm -hmm. I look at y'all, man, I've tried my best to emulate what y'all have done in my own life. You know, there's so many cats. And here's the other part, man. It's almost like we don't get a chance to talk about being good dads and right. the struggles of being uh, fathers, man. That's right. one of the, the the things that drew us out in the very early part of our running is that we exactly. go out. I tell people, man, we would go out and we we run two or three miles. Yep. You know, when it was just me, you and Jay, yep. we do three miles. You get your turn to complain. Yep. I get my turn. Jay <laughs> can complain about his. Right. And afterwards, we were stronger men, yes. stronger husbands, yes. stronger daddies. And we shared our stories, man. It's the most vulnerable space when you out there running those miles you you can't wear no mask it's too can't, hot it's you know too hot, right, 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 it's too right, hot right, to right, wear the mask right, right? right and so it's a vulnerable space for us to share right and what would happen is all these other folks these other brothers would come out and run with us and right. so we had to have more time so we go from running three miles now we got to run four because now we got a dv out there exactly. we got, you know what i mean we got all these folks yeah that are running so now you know it's just a community a vulnerability. I don't know if you remember. This was uh, this wasn't that long ago. Uh, I remember where we were. We were leaving from Hazelwood Central, and it was real dark outside. And we were we were running, and uh, I forgot who said it, but they said, "You know what? Uh, you, it's just it's just vulnerability out here." And right. somebody said, "We we hug each other. We are men who hug. Yep, and we do two arm hugs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Man, I just love that. That's a perfect analogy for man we are out here to love and support each other you know what and i agree i think sometimes men don't want to show that softer side and, and it's okay and it's not anything you know other than just loving on you know, your brother yeah you know it's okay to tell your guy i love you yeah you know what i mean give him a hug or something like that and, and let me just say this um i want to give you some flowers too brother because man i've learned so much from you in this running space and everything I'm gonna tell you one thing that I learned that might be simple to others, but it blew my mind, right? You and I went to Memphis and we ran the um, St. Jude's oh, yeah. full marathon and we stayed at the hotel. And as we were getting ready to leave, you tip the uh, ladies to clean the room 20 bucks. I ain't never done it. I'm like, well, I said, what are you doing? You said, well, hey man, I'm, I'm tipping them for, for cleaning our room. You know, from this point on, I tip. Now wow. for clean the room. Wow. So you learn different things from different people Absolutely. because you're definitely about service and the appreciation of service. Yeah. And you're a pretty good damn dad, your damn self. Man, we we, <laughs> so, we learn so much from, yeah, from yeah, each other. Yeah. Man. We learn it on a run trip by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you can notice everything we do is about running. We and it's a, it's it's life, man. It's like a metaphor for yeah. for how we live. Yeah, yes. I'm sure people get sick of us talking. I know they get sick of me talking about running. Yeah, but that's the lens by which I see and understand the world that we Absolutely. live in. Absolutely, know? absolutely. Yeah, you know, we we even learn a lot on these trips about about each other. I still don't know what the hell Jermon be doing in the bathroom. We don't for know. Hour, I do. What do, you do? Why did it take you so long in the bathroom, bro? It's okay. <laughs> he, but he come out but even he, much better. Yeah, 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 much yeah, better. yeah. And speaking of that, man, we've had a a lot of people in our community that have come in and you know they've been with us for a little while i think about biali biali you know what i yes, mean and, and they come into these spaces and they contribute and then life takes them in a, a different direction man mm -hmm. so we've seen a lot of people how, how, how do you feel about that man? you know what it's life it's it's, it's life harlem man um you come in you get what you need and you come in for the time that you're supposed to be there right um i think it's naive to think that as a as a totality that we're all going to be together for the rest of our life it just doesn't happen that way 
right? Yeah. So if you come in, the amount of time that you're there, you get what you need. If you have to leave and step away, life take you in another direction, yeah. that's fine. But guess what? That door is revolving, so you can always, can always come back. Come back. You always can come back. We've had people that, you know, their job have taken them in a different direction. Marriage has taken them in a different direction. Um, whatever the case may be. But you always can come back. So I love the fact that, one, we're still here for you to come back, too. Um, mm -hmm. And two, is just that you thought enough of us or you thought that we were... Um, you know, influencing your life for you to come back. So yeah. I love it. I, I, man, I absolutely people, love it. But people love your presence, man. They, there's, something, there's something special about when you're there. Uh, people look forward to seeing you, your smile, your energy, mm -hmm. you know, the positivity. You always got a, a ton of laughs for everybody. Yeah. And it brings people in. And there are some people who, who said, hey, listen, running ain't for me. Right. And you've even created even more spaces for them to stay connected. Exactly. Exactly. Um, running is not for everyone. So, I mean, um, active people have reached out by walking. You know, we might yeah. can do that. Or uh, we've reached out by weight training. Some people don't want to run, but they want to weight train. Uh -huh. And I'm a big proponent of weight training. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, there's just so many different avenues to get people connected from a health standpoint. Yeah. And not only from a health standpoint, from a community standpoint. Yeah. You know, so we have something for you. Yeah. If you're not a runner, you'll be a biker. Yep. If you're not a biker, you'll be a weightlifter. Yeah. If you're not a weightlifter, you'll be a hiker, hiker or whatever mountain the case, climbing, mountain whatever. climbers. We we have something for you. Man, David is doing something crazy, man. I just saw I just saw a boy. Da no, David uh Oh, David um World Traveler. World Traveler David, yeah. No job, David. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we don't know he he different. <laughs> David, I don't know what David was doing, man. Some of the shoes anyway. We'll come back to that. Yeah. But I think one of the things we've learned from David, even on one of, I think we went on a camping trip and we just kind of watched David, man, he is living every day of his life, like exploring, doing the things that he loves to yeah. do. Yeah. You know, I think, and that, and that's true. I think for us, um, and when I say us, I mean African-Americans, uh -huh. I think we don't know the possibilities that exist. Right. So I think a lot of times we live in this space of what we know. Yeah. And I think when you get and you learn different stuff. Now, I think we're much better. Black people hike is sure. awesome. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black people bike is awesome. Yeah. You know? And I think we're starting to now put people in different spaces to be like, hey, yeah. there's some other things going on out here. Absolutely. You know? And I think we, at that point, now we're starting to gravitate toward that. Yeah. Because you made a key point, man. Life is so precious. And you have to be able to step out of what you know yeah. and be open to try different stuff. Sure. You know? And I think that's I think that's key. So so we just got a couple minutes left, man. Okay. So what what's next for 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 KD, man? So what what you got what you got coming up? You I mean, know what, you what man? Do, I'm just I'm out of here, brother. Just just trying to keep it going. You know, yeah. I want people. Honestly, I think I really want to push us a little harder, or push us a little farther, right? So I'm not a CrossFitter. Mm -hmm. um, I'm somewhat of a marathon runner. I would like to see us in more of those spaces. Yeah. You know, I want to I do not want us to shy away from that challenge. Yeah. Of doing that. Um, I would like to create something that create that whole type of, yeah. you know, t test your mental, test your physical Absolutely. type of thing. Absolutely. And, and I think once we do that and we kind of get out of that space of why we because, you know, what's the thing with, uh, with us sometime with us? We yeah. ran 10 miles. Why? Well, why? What do you do that for? <laughs> what do you do that for? <laughs> you know, and, and so I think to, to create that possibility of this is normal. I want to create normalcy yeah. within our African American community of yeah. challenging ourselves and going beyond. That's right, man. Yep. It, it, we're expanding the umbrella of blackness. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Black people do run marathons. We run marathons. Black people yeah. do hike. Yep. Black people yep. do, you know, these cycling and all of this stuff, Absolutely. man. We do centuries. Absolutely. We do all of that stuff, man. But as far as me, man, I'm just I'm just keeping going, brother. I'm trying to man. trying to stay healthy and just trying to stay positive and keep the smile going, you know? Yeah, you know, one thing I'll say this, <laughs> I'll say this, man. People think that uh we ain't got nothing else to do. Yeah. Right? They have no idea that you work a, a nine to five. So let me run it down to you. <laughs> <laughs> run it down to you. So here it is, America. 445, wake up in the morning. I go meet these awesome people on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then meet another awesome group on Tuesday and Thursday for some weight training, right? Then I work for the federal government, have been doing so for 30 years in January. <laughs> and then in the afternoon, I actually have a commercial cleaning company that I do. So you're talking about on average of 11 to a 15-hour day, five days a week, right? 
I'm not saying that to, to, to brag or anything, mm-hmm. but here's the thing about it. You can do what you want to do. You'll carve out some space to do what, what you want to do. Choose, what you want to do is a choice, and you just have to decide, this is what I'm going to do, right? So I have every excuse to be like, and I do sometimes. I'm human. I get tired sometimes. You know, your body has this way of shutting down, but you can't create this, this space of excuses, you know, you just have to do it. And I think you'll feel better about it once you just did it. You might not do it, I don't know, say you want to do five miles. You mm-hmm. only did two. Well, you did something, you know? Yeah. So uh, it's just about getting out. And then one thing, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. And I just say one thing, our mantra is always just show up. Just show up. Just show up. If you show up, you're going to do the work. That's right. You just show up. But That's you have right. to show up. Yep. yep. So we got a, um, we got a winner coming up. And it's cold. Oh, yeah. uh, so 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 we don't expect a whole lot of new people gonna come out in the winter. Uh, but how much does it cost to come run with us? You man? know what? Let me tell you. So when I did the calculations, when I actually looked at the tax returns, <laughs> as I'm looking at the tax returns, I noticed that I've made zero dollars. No money. No money on this. <laughs> hey, hey, family, it costs nothing. All we ask you come to bring a positive attitude. That's it. And a willingness to try. That's all. That's all it costs you. That's all it costs. That's all it costs. You don't even have to work a job for that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you're going to spend some money on these shoes. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Sir. Don't look at the ones I have on today because yeah. these are not running shoes. Man, but, uh, shoes. You're going to spend, well, I, you know, you don't play, you don't play football with a bat. That's right, man. <laughs> so all you have to have the right matters. stuff. All right, so, uh, man, we're running out of time. Okay. So I want to say thank you, bro, for being the kind of person that you are. Thank you. Thank, uh, you. thank you for being in our lives and leading. Uh, this fitness journey for us in so many yeah. different ways. But, yeah. uh, man, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, bro. Yeah. I want to give you your roses now. Give you your flowers now. Yeah, is that what yeah. they're saying now? Give you your flowers. Hey, man, thank you for creating this this platform. You know, this this is important. We need to get the word out to everyone on um, health, mind, body, and soul. Yeah. Um, eating and just, just yeah. overall wellness, yeah. right? So we really thank you for this platform you created. Yeah. Well, yeah. I appreciate it, man. We just, we doing what we are, what we can, uh, just starting some conversation. I don't know how to do this stuff, man. My man, Chris, behind the camera doing all his work, hey. he keeps telling me how to do it. And yeah. so, uh, man, as long as I'm I'm alive and, and, and can afford to, to keep, you know, doing this thing and bringing in friends and having these conversations, I'm praying that somebody's going to be blessed. Oh, they are. We do it all in love. So uh, thanks for joining us. Eat love, shit flowers, run like a Tesla, no gas. We'll see you in the next time. Thanks, bro. All right, bro. That's beautiful, man. Hey, man.